to really also look at this very subtle part of the evolution, what we all are experiencing in, in today's time. I think these are the two things which I wanted to discuss and share for this evening. Thank you so much. Rejected any funding, and can you share with us? Oh, uh, 100 percent. <laughs> Rejection. I mean, that's that's a part and parcel of being in business. I'll tell you an interesting story. And uh, one of my friends told me, like uh, in Australia, for example, when they're hiring the core intelligence team, right? They take their resumes where there is at least one failure. Because what happens? I mean, everybody in this room is very talented. Okay. The, the question comes out is. After a certain time, talent becomes useless virtue. Because it is not the talent that takes you. It might open your first door, second door, but it doesn't take you to the last door. It's the hard work and persistence. So, coming back to your question, Mikhail, what the Australian law, basically, intelligence wants to know is, if a talented person fails, what happens? Is he ready to come back again, or it's end of his career? You know. So, of course, we had a lot of rejections. I mean, the first, I guess you don't want to pitch your uh, investment pitch or your business plan to the best possible investor. You want to go in this as a stepping stone. You want to practice yourself. You want to take the rejections. And, and, and that's, that's where the key lies, that you need to prepare yourself with a very positive frame of mind. And for that, I'll give you a little background. I do not come from a business background with you. I come from an engineering background. My, my grandfather, my great grandfather was an engineer. My grandfather was an engineer. My father. So, going to the engineering school was actually a no-brainer. But first, it's like go get your engineering degree and then think what you want to do. You know, that's the tradition. After graduating from University of Alabama, uh, I worked as a systems engineer for all company and. Really, I wasn't enjoying it, so, and I always had a passion for flying. Again, like James said, in 20s, passion works. Now, at 45, I would probably not pursue the passion. I'll go with the strategy and low-risk profile businesses. But coming back to this, after flying, I, for three years, I realized that's not what I want to do. And suddenly, I mean, I moved from Alabama to Georgia, and I said, I don't really want to work for anybody, and I'm going to take upon starting my own business. Now, that's a big challenge coming from a middle-class cultural background in India. I mean, everybody, apart from my parents, were like, are you crazy? What are you doing? You know, you have a good job, you're a pilot, and why do you want to quit for going for something that's unknown? But that's your intuition, that's a strong conviction. I want to do something. And we started with a very small project. I went to the wine school here in Buckhead and got into understanding how the wines work. Because I wanted to be in a business where there is just knowledge required and just not capital. Because you have enough people with a lot of capital. And then it's like the timing. I think one of the uh, presentations said, right timing, right place, right time. I found a vineyard property in Australia during 98, 99, where Australian wines were finding US as a big market. And what did I do? The next thing I did was I, I spent seven years in Alabama with my education. So I went to high net worth doctors that I knew, that who knew, who had seen me grow from 17 to 24. And I went in there and I made a pitch. I said, I don't have any money, but I have this idea. Can you work with me with, with some high returns? And it's all about timing and some part of luck. And they said, okay, we'll do it. And we bought 165 acres of vineyard property east of Adelaide in Australia in 1999. I was 24 years old at that time. And the rest is history. Because we made four times that money in six months. I mean, it's like, it's like home run with all bases loaded. You know? that's, the, that's the scenario we got. And after that, there was no turning back. And again, on the business failures, 
I think, uh, I have not mentioned a whole lot in this screen, but I think 30% uh, of the businesses fail. And we're still here, you know. At the time, again, 2007, 2008, we had a property in uh, near Six Flags. Now, typically, when you buy that property across Six Flags, hotel property, you're like, okay, this is a destination place. So, no matter what, people are going to come. But guess what? When your gas is $4, People from Mississippi and Alabama would not spend that kind of money coming and staying over at Six Flags. So the business went dropped down. Similarly, we had the mining business. And you, you get to a point sometimes where everything that you touch turns gold. So you say, okay, doesn't matter. I'm going to go to Africa. I'm going to do mining. Without really understanding the governing and regulations and policy, you start putting in the money. You learn it hard way, you know. But going back in the business and the independence of working for yourself it doesn't matter you, you completely break down as long as you're ready to come back up again that's what matters and I think everybody should work on it that it doesn't matter how many failures like all you need is one success similarly on investment you don't need 10 investors all you need is one investor who's willing to believe and put money in your project and that's all they need so keep trying that's the perfect example of a bamboo tree, I mean, there is no instant gratification. It's consistent work, action, and then you will gain momentum in a period of time. Did I answer your question? Any, any other questions? All right, thank you so much. I really enjoyed this workshop. Thank you. Going for See, no again, uh, okay, there, there is, it's not like one formula that fits everybody. The, it, uh, the funding is, is more like what exactly are you looking for? What is your project? Is your project based on hard asset, whether it's a tangible asset or the, whether it's a concept? So, for example, if you have a project which is a concept, like for example, an IT project, right? Then you, after you prepare your business plan, you probably need to have a core team because when you pitch it to an investor, more, more than likely the SBA or the commercial banking, they're not even going to touch you. So you go to the angel investor or you go to private equity and see, or VCs. One of the things I have not covered is VC because I've never had a good luck with getting the right VC on board. Most of the VCs that I've pitched in, they either wanted a major share in the company or they were just not interested in the project. But you go to them and you pitch it. But the key factor would be, one is your concept. And the second part is your core team. Because at that point in time, the VC is investing in you. They're not investing in the product. And this is what my experience has been. Your product might be the best, but if you don't have the right management team behind it, it is not going to work. I think uh, somebody covered that earlier regarding the failures, right? So any investor who looks at it is going to look at your ability to execute the business plan. Of course, that doesn't mean you have a rubbish business plan, it will work. Apart from a good business plan, it's more on the emphasis on the execution and the team who is executing the business plan. Uh, have you ever heard about uh, Lead 411? That's world renowned. Uh, it's a renowned company in USA regarding some database kind of thing. No, I, have, I have not. The re recent uh, funding sources that I've heard is about crowdfunding. I'm sure some of you have already seen that. Yeah. I've never had that experience, so I didn't cover it in my subject. But that's getting popular. But again, the analysis I've been like, I think 6% of the businesses get successful on crowdfunding. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you Rahul, for sharing all the different types of, uh, of fund, funds, like uh, the seed funds, then factor the funds from friends and family and the angel funds. Um, and thank you Amol for uh, for uh, sharing your Dr. Share, for sharing Dr. Parnarkar Life Management Foundation's visions on startups and the self-employment. So uh, and thank you for all your time and thank you for being with us. So we have a five minutes of break for the coffee break and then we can come back with a very excited session. So our next session will be very excited. So um, 
after the coffee break. So we have just the five minutes of break, and then we will have our next section. Thank you. Oh,